Hello. All right, this session we're going to cover our right toolbar menu. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've got um, an icon here that will access our library of images. We have, so I can just click on the icon and here are the different uh, image folders in within my library. We have the template category. Um, this is where we can access are not only our Friesen templates, but any templates that you have saved. Now, when using our Friesen templates, make sure you select the template that is for your book size. So in my case, I'm working with templates that are eight and a half, or with a book size that's eight and a half by 11. So I can just go into our layouts here Sorry, I'm just going to move myself over there. I can scroll down and find a vast variety of templates in this um, theme category. We can also select our backgrounds. We've got lots of backgrounds available. Uh, this is our COVID filler backgrounds. We've got abstract, comic, um, comic has a, has some big, wild, vibrant colors, um, and etc. We also have clip art, different, different varieties. We've got layers and I'll talk more about layers later. And then we have comments, and uh, I'll mention that part as well. So let's go to, first things first, we need a layout. So um, this is what I typically tell my, or this is what I use when um, creating a layout from scratch. So let's just draw an oval circle, oval over the spread. Um, this helps us set up our, our page. So first things first, we want to add a, use the photo box tool, and we want to add a dominant photo something that is going to um, catch the eye of the reader. Okay, and so I'm just going to uh, bring that. I'm gonna use my columns here to design. So here's my first photo box. And Let's put a photograph in there right away while it's active. Here's my photo. What does everybody look at when they first open their book their, and look at a page? So they look at the dominant photo. Then we look for a photograph of ourselves, possibly, which is not dominant or may not be dominant. But uh, let's put that one here. And then let's put another photo box in. And I can use the, the arrow key on the keyboard to, to uh, move my, tech, my photo box into position. Okay, and so you'll see how by following this circle, just going to extend that one right there to the bottom, actually past the bleed, 
and um, let's do another photo box here. I'm going to take a guide and help us align that text or that photo box with this photo box. And then I'm going to, I'm going to take this photo box, I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to drag it over here to this side. And once again, I'm going to take that guide and slide it up so I can make sure my photos are aligned. Okay, so now we've got our photo boxes in place. So let's remove our Sir Ovo, and here's our layout. So uh, with photo boxes. So let's um, put in some text boxes. Once again, keeping in mind, we want to stay within the margin of the page. So I don't really like the way this this photograph has this empty spot here. So I'm just going to extend that. And there we go. All right. Um, so let's place some more photographs. So we are still in our image over here, our image category. Let's select a photo box and simply click and drag your photograph. All right, and from there, you can adjust your cropping of that image by double clicking, and it'll give you the, the orange nodes. Now the orange nodes indicate cropping. So I can, and I can crop this photograph accordingly. I can double click again. Um, the orange nodes indicate that if I drag it, that's as big as my image is going to get. Um, I can't make it any larger. Let's work on this image. I'd like to adjust the cropping so because right now Max's head is being trimmed off at the edge of the page. So I can simply double click on the image so the orange nodes show up and I can bring it down and now he's cropped differently. Um, but my photo box is not bleeding at the top so I'm going to extend that past the pink. All right, um, here's another photo. Let's uh, put Roxy in there. Yes, I'm a pet lover. Um, and we'll add one more. And here is a photograph of the crazy pet lady. Now, something you will notice, we haven't placed a, head, a text box for a headline. So let's do that now. And so here is our text box. Okay. And... Uh, now let's save that um, because yes, it's most important that we save. All right, so that's how to access the images from your library. Now, if you want, um, here is an upload icon where you can upload from 
your desktop and upload images to your library so um, to your folder so let's just select pink day and browse this is where you can browse for your images Let's take this image, Friday Funny FaceTime. So I've selected it. Um, it does tell me the file size. It's only 9K. So I would clear that because that file size is too small. So let's look for another one here. Uh, we're gonna look, we're gonna get an image of Kareen. This one's 51K, so well, let's do the upload and you'll see that the image was processing. Not a great photo, uh, kind of blurry. So I'll do another upload, browse again, and I can see my file size here, so let's take this one. This is a better size. My display name, you can change your display name to whatever um, you'd like. Uh, description of the photograph. So I'm just going to, for this training session, I'm just going to call this Pink Day um, Group. Sorry, I'm not quite sure what this photo is of. But anyway, let's start the process. Alright, so that's the upload button. Now, um, let's save this page again. And I'm just going to close this page and show you how to apply a template. Alright, so my page is open. And I'm going to click on the template icon and let's find a template that is 8.5 by 11. And so here's some cool ideas. And let's apply. I like this one. So let's apply it to the page. So now we've got a template already designed. Uh, we can simply click on the text, highlight the text, and change the title. Okay, so let so this is a photo box or it can be a filler um, area. So let's find a photograph. And you'll notice that all these images say they've been used or they have the used tag. That tells me that those images are on a different page. Um, so here uh, you'll notice that the black box is still appearing. Um, my photograph I, is not large enough to fill that box. So I'm just going to do the undo, undo, and I'm going to remove the fill and I'm going to put, drag my photograph back in there. And then I'm going to make, I'm double clicking and double click again. And now I'm going to change the photo box size to accommodate our photograph. Um, I can change, double click and I can adjust the cropping. double click again. I can adjust the photo box size um, simply because 
just trying to uh, work with the portion uh, proportion of the photograph. <coughs> Excuse me. Over here, I'm going to add another photograph. Let's say you don't like the color of the text box. You can change your color to your project colors simply by clicking on the Rubik's Cube. Let's go back a little. So I'm on, so I've selected my fill, my area. I want to change my color. So I click on the, the fill button and here's my Rubik's Cube and I can change it to pink. This is, these are my project colors and uh, Nabil will allude to that in the uh, Connect Me session. So let's change, I can click, click and, or on your, on your keyboard, hold down the control button. Uh, I know that's for PCs, I'm not sure what it is for Macs. I can select all these elements. Oops, I don't want that one. And once again, let's go to fill to the Rubik's Cube, where is my project colors. And I can change those to our color. Here, I'm gonna do the same thing. So templates are really nice. This allows you to um, already have a foundation of your layout and then go in and, and simply modify it to whatever your, your, uh, your theme colors may be or whatever you want to design your, your spread as. So it's a nice, nice foundation to get started. All right. So that's how you can modify uh, templates use templates and modify. Um, you may not want to have as much text. You can reduce the text box and add yet another photo. Um, they're very versatile, so... I'm just going to bring in a guide here so I know how to set my photo and let's add another photo. There we go. There is our layout used from templates. Um, over here next we have our clip art. Uh, simply once again click on the icon, find your um, category and um, click on the element. Let's sorry. Let's first fill, put a, a photo box in place. Make sure it's selected, and drop your icon or drop your clip art in there. Now I want to adjust the cropping. My photo box isn't proportioned right, so let's just extend that a little. And there is our, hmm, I don't like the yellow color. I'm going to select it again and place the pink butterfly instead. Okay, so there we go templates. Uh, so we've covered images, templates. Oh, I jumped past backgrounds. My apologies on that. Um, yes, we can, we can find our templates and um, our, our backgrounds. Apply something. Uh, here's one. No. Um, yeah, let's take this gray one. I'm going to drag it over. So you'll notice that it placed it over top of everything. 
Um, while the notes are still selected, you can right click and send to back. So that's how you can send everything to the back. Um, or the other option, I'm just going to undo that. Um, we can go to the Layers tab. And so right now you'll see that the background is at the top. I can simply click on it. Oh, sorry, because the background is selected, um, it'll appear selected on this side in blue. I can click on this layer and drag it all the way to the bottom. Where'd it go? Drag it all the way down. And now it's in the back. You'll notice on this text box, there's a little caution sign. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. So you can take a peek on that. So this little caution sign, the text box has lower Epson text in it. It's just a placeholder text. Um, if we hover over the icon, it is a, it's telling us that the text box has hidden text. So if I double click on this, you'll see how much text there is. So we really don't want all that text. And as soon as you delete some of it, uh, that icon will go away. All right, so just a word of caution, what that caution sign says. Let us go zoom back out. I'm gonna save. <coughs> so while we're in the Layers tab, um, so I, I showed you how you can move backgrounds. Um, this is how you can access different elements on the page as well, um, simply by clicking in the menu bar, hiding stuff. Um, you can, over here we've got locks, so our first column uh, of locks. Black, the black color means the, the elements are unlocked. If you want to lock elements, you click on the lock and it'll lock everything in position. So that means you can still um, replace photographs. You just can't move the photo boxes, all right? Uh, because I've locked those elements into place. Uh, we can unlock and it'll unlock all the layers, all the different elements in the layout. So once again, lock and unlock. So our first column is for the content. Um, I don't think it's a, a tool. I personally don't use that tool a lot for locking content unless it w might be page folios. Um, and over here, we've got lock and position. I use that one a lot, okay? Um, our third, our final item is comments. So uh, you can put in a, a comment. <coughs> you can select who you're going to send this comment to. And I'm going to say... Be sure to check the spelling. So here's my comment that I posted for Michael Buer to make sure to check spelling. So this is one area where you can communicate with the team. All right. So let us... Zoom in a little, oh, too, too much. I'm gonna fit screen. All right, um, let's just save this spread.
just going to refresh my screen here. So here's a couple of pages that we've, or here's the earlier page that we designed. Page, the system is now processing um, the preview, the th preview, preview of the thumbnail. And so when uh, Michael comes in to look at his layout, he will have this little comment icon will be flashing uh, and yellow to indicate to him that there's a message for him to review. All right, so let's take another clean page and I want to uh, talk about the toolbar with in, so I'm placing my text box. Um, I kind of jumped ahead of myself, my apologies on that. Um, so over here, now that I have my text box selected, over here we've got the X and Y coordinates of this text box. Um, we have the height, uh, w the width and height of the text box. Um, rotation, we can rotate it um, over here by using the slider, or we can grab this double arrow and rotate it that way. So let's put a little bit of text in here. I'm just going to double click in the text box and I'm going to put test. Uh, I'm going to select that text and um, increase the font size. I can select my fonts. These are fonts that have been set up in the settings tab. Uh, it's something you do in the early start of your project, determine which fonts you're going to use. And uh, we'll just select the font. Um, we can change the font or the text color once again by hitting, let's select that text box again, select our text. So to the right of the font is the font color click on that and let's make sure to go to our Rubik's Cube over here that has our project colors and now I've selected the teal green that's the color of my text um, this text is only available I can underline it but I can't bold or or italicize it I can Right now my text is left justified. I can, or left aligned, I can center it. I can right align it, or I can force align it. Uh, just, um, that one didn't work. And let me move myself out of the way. All right, so, um, we can add a shadow box to the text. Once again, um, we can change the color of it. I'm just going to leave it black for now. I can change the size of the shadow by either using the slider or typing it in. And I can determine which way I'd like the slider to, or the, the shadow to go. So I can, it'll be shadow going bottom right, top right, top left, or bottom left. Now, um, let me just move myself out of the way again here. I can also, so that's, that's the toolbar for the text. I can change the opacity of that text as well. Sorry, I jumped jumped over that button so I can determine whether or not I want that title to simply be a watermark on the page very light uh, faint or I can bring it back up to a hundred percent opacity so that is the the tool menu 
for the text. So let's place another photo box here. And so I've got my photo box selected. And once again, uh, here are my coordinates where I've placed it. Um, let's find a photograph. Actually, let's let's make several photo boxes. Okay, so let's just put several photo boxes on the page here. And I'm going to select all four photo boxes. Now we can align these photo boxes by clicking the align icons. So now they're all they're all left aligned. All right, let's undo that. We can, I'm just going to, sorry, I'm just going to bring this down a little, bring that down, and that one down, just for demonstration. So let's select them all again. Um, we can center align, that means it's they're being aligned in a column. We can left right align. Um, let's go back over here. So this is left align. Um, I'm going to undo that one. So once again, left align, center align, and right align. Okay, um, we can select multiple boxes or shapes and fill them as well. Uh, let's once again go to our Rubik's Cube and fill them with our project color. All right, I think that covers it. Um, once again, it's been a pleasure giving you um, some quick tips in Design It, our online design tool. I hope you will find this beneficial. Take care and enjoy the rest of the sessions.